All right. Welcome, 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 YouTubers, whoever's there. Be sure to leave some comments down below so I know you're there. Check in, let us know. We're here with Georgia. Um, leave some comments down below so I know you're there. Check in, let us know. We're here with um, feedback there. Georgia. Leave some comments down below so I know you're there. You can turn your volume down. <laughs> we didn't practice that part. We're Hello. here with the bug guy, who is a pest control expert. Thank you very much for joining us today, John. <laughs> and we have a few planned questions for you. Then we're going to go into the game. No stress, is very laid back crew. Um, thanks to those that are here. Let's see. Has anybody commented yet? No comments yet, as far as I know. Just know there's a little bit of a delay. Okay. So if you guys have any questions, leave them below too. So the first question we have for you as a pest control expert, how many years experience do you have? I've been doing pest control for about 21 years. Wow. And why pest control? I mean, 21 years sounds like you must like it. Oh, I like it because um, it's always different. You're always learning. Um, every job is different from one another. It's, it's, it's not uh, a routine uh, type job where you have to go in the office, sit down at a computer. I, I like working outside and meeting different people. The work is interesting. Um, I deal with all sorts of different uh, situations and it's, it's been fun. I enjoy doing it. Okay. Okay. And so it's not like a special love for bugs. You're not just like fixated with bugs, like really love bugs. Well, I do like uh, I, I do like bugs because it's just uh, it's amazing to see how how these bugs were created. They all do different things for the environment. And and it's 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 uh, it's been quite interesting seeing the, uh, the role that they play for the ecosystem. OK. All right. Very interesting. Very interesting. And so um, I'm a tiny homeowner. I heard from a little birdie that you recently acquired a tiny home. Uh, what would you suggest for us um, to, as far as um, keeping pests out? Because that's what we're usually uh, concerned with. How do we keep pests out? Well, um, <clears throat> I know some, some may be concerned about, <clears throat> about chemicals and things like that around children and pets and whatnot. So there are uh, uh, some things we can do uh, for preventative pest control mm -hmm. that, that doesn't even involve any, any chemicals. And it can keep a wide range of uh, pests out the house. I mean, we can, um, for, for starter, uh, we can check and see if they're like the door sweeps for the doors, the front doors. We can see if they're worn out. See if there's anything that that's torn or something can crawl underneath those areas. Uh, window screens, make sure those are are um, fixed and no tears. Um, there's um, also the lighting around the house. A lot of the insects are nocturnal, so uh, at nighttime, um, it may not be the prettiest color, but uh, usually they suggest a. Um, like a, a low yellow light. Yeah, those yellow and that usually, light. And that usually attracts uh, less flying insects, mosquitoes, flies, things like that. And um, those are just uh, just a, a very few things that you can do to, to help keep pests from, yes, from, from inhabiting those areas. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, are there any other preventative measures that you recommend uh, for homeowners? Like I've you've mentioned before, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, for one, I know <clears throat> in my experience uh, going doing homes, uh, the first thing there are people home. You know, the home is a, it's a it's a big investment, and the first thing they want to do is protect that investment. And usually, termites are are probably the number one thing that that that's most uh, mentioned. And I always get asked question all the time: What can I do to prevent termites? And um, there are some things that we can do as homeowners to, to at least uh, uh, 
see the signs and 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 there are things that make the condition around the house less conducive for them to to be attracted to and i and i think one of the ones i see a mistake being made is uh maybe a lot of leaf clutter against the house where the grade or the base of the house is hard to see a lot of times that uh, has a lot of moisture and that's exactly what the termites uh need and are looking for uh wood pallets against the the homes, uh, firewood against the homes, uh, and even bricks. Uh, sometimes I see stacks of bricks uh, pretty close to the foundation of the house, and and the termites uh, usually are, are looking for such protective areas like that where the sun is not beating down on it. And the, the most uh, common termite that we usually run into, at least here in the south, is subterranean termites, and those are the ones that uh, make little mud tunnels up on the concrete wall and um it keeps it keeps predators out and it keeps the moisture inside that tunnel so whenever we create an area that's uh that's uh, will give them more chance of, of survival or more chance of, of of easy access into the home harder to detect that's the the that's what they'll do so um, when you can remove all these areas and move all the conducive things out the way, it makes it a lot easier for the home owner to see the signs and also, uh, and it would help them to uh, see that if, if there's any other measure that they may need to take or not. But most cases it termites, uh, there's, there's, um, there's products that we can use also on the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a nice uh, termiticide lease around the outside will create at least a protective barrier from them from coming into the house. But if you're, like I said before, if you're the type that's kind of cautious about what you're putting around the house and inside the house, then you can take those kind of like those preventative measures that I mentioned that at least uh, help, you know, keep the area uninhabitable for, uninhabitable for them. Okay, I like that point because a lot of us are concerned about what we have. It's around, pets around, and we don't want to put just any kind of, but we also don't want to put the bugs. Like, we don't want bugs in the house. So <laughs> it's kind of like what you choose, choose between the two evils. And uh, you've educated me on spraying inside that once you spray inside, like, it's like the point, you're just breathing it in. The problem is that they're coming inside. So what are some of the other preventative tips that you can give um us uh, for as we're coming up on um summertime well we're in summertime we're coming up on fall time what can be done to if you already have pests inside the home like what do you what do you suggest what would you do well the first thing is uh, doing preventative pest control is what i look for on the inside is why are the inside is there a population growing and in most cases, it has to do with conducive areas such as food, water, shelter. Uh, believe it or not, some homes um, that I've been into uh, have, will have food all over the floor, dishes not washed, uh, just a, a nice place for, for pests to thrive. And um, so when you take away some of these things, um, you bring stress on those pests and they don't they they usually don't live for very long without those things they have to have food they have to have water and when you take some of those things away from them that's one way to, to help knock down the population another way is uh let's say if they're cockroaches um there's cockroach baits that we can use we can apply like into the cabinet area dark areas where we know that they're going to be hiding behind the stove behind the refrigerator around the motor housing areas that are warm areas that that hold moisture and um and for let's say american cockroaches those those insects like to come up through the plumbing area so a good way to uh kind of take that that point of entry away is to look down the cabinet see if the the plates are against the wall where the plumbing is and if if not can we replace them? Can we put some plates there? Um, and also we can put um, perhaps like diatomaceous earth in those wall void areas. 
And and it stays out from your area. You're not breathing it. Pets not going to get into it or anything like that. And and plus, it makes it very unattractive for any pests to come up through those areas. Okay. So the best plan then for as far as you're concerned is in any season is to try to keep them from coming in. Is there a particular season? Because I'm in Florida, you're in Texas, that we might run into more pests? Because I feel like summertime is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, at least on the outside. So whenever I'm, I'm doing pest control, I'm always looking for how can they get into the homes? And mm -hmm. what's uh, what are the areas around the home that may provide uh you know, food, water, and shelter, or some type of conducive areas there, right? So the first thing um, outside, let's say mosquito season. We know mosquito se season usually come from spring all the way down to summertime, right? Right. Well, at least the homeowner can do something uh, to prevent that. And one of those ways are is to see if there's any uh, anywhere in the yard that has standing water or where you know it has a history where water is going to be, it, when it does a nice, good uh, downpour, certain levels of the area, you'll see that your yard is flooding in some areas, right? So there, there is one really nice product that I, I like to use personally for mosquitoes, and you can even get on Amazon. It's called uh, Mosquito Dunks. Mosquito? How do you mosquito, spell? They're called, that's exactly what they're called, Mosquito, mosquito. Dunks. They Dunk. look like a donut. Dunk. Donuts. Oh. Yeah, they look like a donut. It's called Dunks, like D-U-N-K, mosquito dunks. So oh, okay. what I love about these are that you can use it around aquatic areas. It doesn't affect the fishes. It doesn't affect birds. It doesn't do anything like that. And so what it, what it, and the reason that that being is, is that it, uh, it's produced by a bacteria. And that oh. bacteria kills the the larva that are inside the water in those stagnant areas. But so, it doesn't put any like poisons in the water. No, no, no. It doesn't affect like fish or anything like that at all. It's really uh, uh, effective. And um, and another thing is I never birds, knew that. Why didn't you tell yeah. me this before? The yeah. and, you can, and if you have like a bird bath or something that has a lot of stagnant right. water in it, you can take, you can cut those into little pieces and drop them into the water. Oh. And if you have, you know, containers with buckets of water, you turn them over. At least that's what you can do as a homeowner, at least for your area. Right. right. Because we know that, you know, mosquito is a, is a wide area. It can be come from the neighbor's yard. It can come from the field back there, but at least you can do your part. Right. To knock down the numbers. Okay. Look, that's a hot tip. I like it. I like it a little late in the summer, but we're going to use it anyway. <laughs> I'll be getting those mosquito dunks. And I put the, I think the correct spelling in the comments below. If you could check that, if anybody's <laughs> interested in checking that out now or later, the comments. Yeah. You don't, you don't need no license or anything for them. Right. Okay. Very good. You can find them on Amazon. Okay. Great tips because we are all fighting the mosquitoes in Florida, especially Georgia. And as a pest control Florida. technician, that, that is what I use to on the job. Very good. I totally agree with you, Sylvia. The natural remedies are my preference too, not poisoning myself and the air around mm -hmm. us. So that's great. Thank you guys so much for commenting. Keep on commenting. If you have any questions for him, keep on with those too. We're going to be playing the game soon. So make sure that uh, you're ready to beat John, which it may be impossible. He has 22 years of experience. No. But we can at least try. We can at least try, <laughs> right? We're going to give him a good run for his money. So um, I think I covered the questions that I, I wanted to cover. Was there any other special tips you'd like to share with us? That The mosquito one was something new. We didn't even go over in rehearsal, and I love that. Um, any other hot tips or any special questions? Oh, Kizzy has a question about flies. What about flies? What can we do to keep flies out? Because they are a pest. From the house? Like around the house or a business? I'm not sure. I would think it would be. I think she's probably about a house. The so, house, yeah. So, so we got a about ladybugs. Yeah, just so you know. So you can take one at a time. Ladybugs, ants, sugar ants, and flies are a question so far. Thank you, guys. Okay. So let's see about the um, which bug was it? Flies. The flies. Yeah, the flies. flies. So flies, depending on what type of fly that you're seeing, if it's inside the house, 
Are they fruit flies, flesh flies, fill flies? They have different products for, for different around the house. flies, mm -hmm. yes. So let's just say if they're fruit flies. If they're fruit flies in the house, then what I usually do is, most people don't know, is that you get the, the fruits that you buy from the store and you wash them in warm water. Because, because the reason being is because from the supermarket, they already come loaded with flies on them. So when they bring in those fruits into the warehouse, they sit them on a pallet and there's just flies landing all over those things. And believe me, I know. They and their eggs, right? <laughs> I've seen it. So, eggs, yeah. so the reason why you don't see them in the store right away is because they put them in cold areas. And as long as the temperature stays cool, you really won't see them. But then when you buy them, you bring them home and you put in your, your, your bow there, it starts getting warm. And that's when they start coming out. So I would first thing would be wash them all off in warm water dry them, then put them in the fruit bowl and you probably won't see any. But okay. but there is something, a product called um, Alpine Fly Bait. And you can get that on Amazon too. It comes in an aerosol spray can. It's a bait though. It's not um, something that you would just spray all around the place. You would you would spray that like around around the windows, around the corners of the doors, Areas where you think flies are going to come in the house. Okay. They land on it. They land on it, and naturally, they're they're dirty. What is the name flies. of that product again? It's called Alpine. A L P I N E, fly bait. Fly bait. And it comes in a. Mass for flies. Yes. Nice. And that's and that's for your fruit flies and and also it's a really good product too to use inside the in, around the trash bins like inside the the trash bins where you, and outside of it okay and I'm also outside well, where okay. you're throwing your trash at when you're throwing your trash in you know in okay. the trash bin you can use that spray inside the lid and around the inner interior of it and now it'll knock down a big population of flies right there. All right. And it, usually, and it usually takes about 30 or 40 seconds for them to get on it and die. Sweet. I like it fast. So the next question was from Nadia about ladybugs. Any suggestions? Ladybugs. ladybugs. I usually don't see those issues until winter time. Oh. And, and, and the reason being why they're so heavy in winter time is they do what's called overwintering. And right before a, a cold front, they'll gather in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them and they'll go into tight spaces. And then that's where they'll lay dormant until springtime. And they'll start when it, once it starts getting warm, they'll start coming out those areas. But here's the problem. When it comes to homes, they're just getting into any crack and crevice that they could get into. <laughs> and then they can't get out. So you start seeing a big influx of them coming inside. But yes, usually it's around a right before a cold front. So if you already know what type, where they're coming in from, then those areas are most likely going to have to get repaired, like with some type of caulking around around any area that you think they can get in. If, if the screen on the window needs to be repaired, then repair it. Um, but as far as pesticide, um, you can, if you have a lot of shrubs around your house, or let's just say maybe you don't have shrub. There's a product that's called um, Tau Star P. Oh my goodness! What is the name of that again? Tau Star P. T A L S T A R with the letter P, not P L. Oh, starts with a P or ends with a P? No, no. It, it's just the that's kind of like um, the P is for is for the liquid form, and oh. P L is for the granulated form. Oh, so is there like a dash and then P? Yeah, sort of like that. You can, you too, you can also, I believe, buy that on Amazon as well. That's too. for what kind of bugs again? It's for a wide uh, range of bugs. It, uh, I use it for uh, spiders, mosquitoes, um, ladybugs as well. But I use it. I use that uh, to spray the shrubs because I know the ladybugs usually get in those areas. And I go around the windows. I go around the doors. I go around anywhere where you would probably go in and 
hit around those all those areas. I wouldn't spray that on the inside because you're trying to keep them from going in. Right. Spray Once they go in, they don't live for very long. There's not a lot of moisture inside the house for them to stay alive for more than maybe a couple of days and then they die. So spraying inside would, wouldn't be effective at all. And plus, okay. you'll, you'll be contaminating, you know. I'm your... learning so much. You know, everybody else is learning so much. Then we have a question from Sylvia about the sugar bug, sugar ants, sugar ants. Oh, man, our arch nemesis. <laughs> they are a tough bugger to get rid of. They are. Uh, I told, uh, not to get so nerdy, but there has been, they're a difficult ant to get rid of. They're most like, they're called rover ants. Uh, a lot of people call them sugar ants. They're tiny, tiny little black ants. And um, their diet changes through the season. So summertime, they like a lot of carbohydrates. And in the uh, wintertime, they they tend to get proteins. Carbohydrates in the summer, because they need a lot of energy to create their colony, and then during the, the, the slow season, when they start slowing down, they go for proteins. Um, there is a product that I use that's called um, Max Force Quantum. Okay. Max Force. <laughs> yeah. Max, Max Force. Yeah. You say Max Force. Quantum. Yeah. Like that? Are you seeing the, the notes I'm putting down here? Because maybe, am I spelling that right? And that's for... Well, the quantum, the way to spell that is Q-U-A-N-T-U-M. Right, quantum. Yeah, that's it. That. Mm -hmm. And that I use for for those particular type of ants. For the sugar ants. Okay, mm -hmm. sugar ants. Yeah, I do. I do yeah, not. I, totally I, do, agree. I, didn't know that. I do not recommend spraying for them on the inside with any type of uh, any type of uh, pesticide sprays. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> Naturally, I me, mean, I didn't know that the ants had food preferences different times a year, but that makes sense. Yeah, and the reason why you don't spray for these guys is because their their mounds are not uh, easily found, and so if they're in a wall void or something, and you spray a few of them, yes, you kill the ones that you see, but the other ones that are there, they'll move in different parts of the house. Um, so it makes it a lot tougher to get rid of them. Where if you put a bait, they stay put in one area and then they go to the bait. So I okay. would. So, but if you're going to use a spray or something, at, I would use uh, soap and water. I would use soap and water to break up their little pheromone trails because whenever they find a food source, they leave a pheromone trail and then all the little workers start oh, walking. See, that's that natural thing that Sylvia was mentioning before. Yeah, so you hit them with there. some soap and water, rub it down real sure. good, and then wipe it away. And then you could perhaps put the bait um, once you finish wiping everything down. The bait you could put maybe like in a little container, a little cap or something, and let them get to it. Oh, I get it. So educated right now. This is amazing. So the last bug that I think, and you guys let me know if I'm missing something else, was earwigs, which I've never heard of them. But she says earwigs, and it says they look like a tiny version of centipedes, but it has pincers on the end, and they tend yeah, to shower. Talking about. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, so they're they're an exterior pest only. They don't live inside. There's nothing for them to, to eat on the inside, but they do come inside uh, as occasional invader. Usually uh, I see earwigs coming inside homes and centipedes and millipedes at the same time due to heavy rain. Usually when there's a lot of rain, uh, they're a shallow nesting insect, so they don't dig deep. So when the ground gets so saturated, they do move up and they will move to higher grounds. They'll, they'll, you'll see them like hanging up high on a wall. And most times in homes, they'll go underneath the door, they'll go inside, but they don't, they don't live for very long once they go inside. Uh, so I, I would think that pesticide inside is not going to be effective for them. But if you want to knock them out right away, that towel star product that I was talking about, you would mix that maybe like in a two gallon sprayer mm -hmm. and treat the mulch and around the shrub area on the ground, and that'll control them. Okay, well, there you go. All right, Nadia, are you, did you get those tips? Was that good for you? Yeah, and then Kizzy has, of course, the the disgusting palmetto bugs or water bugs, like the big old cockroaches that- American, American cockroaches. They're what now? American cockroaches. They're called American cockroaches. 
the big mm-hmm. palmetto bugs. Everyone calls them palmetto bugs, water bugs, you know. But they're called American. Co- Why American? Why they have any American cockroaches? I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that's what they're they're called. Um, okay. On the outside, usually if it's around a home. On the outside, um, I guess. I see them in in areas where there's a lot of trees nearby, uh, a lot of leaf clutter. So if there's leaf co- clutter or anything like that, it's going to take some work. You're going to have to remove all their harbage area. If there's anything up against the house, like two by fours or bricks or anything against the house, all that's going to have to be moved away. Um, if there's any leaks outside or any like anywhere where water is dripping against or close to the home, that too will will uh, attract them. But for those guys, I there's um, there's there's a product that's called Max Force Complete. It's a granule bait. Max and Force, that in the, Max Force Complete. No, Max no, you put uh, Max Force Quantum. No, but Max Force Complete is is uh, is a bait that I use for uh, for those American cockroaches. I'll use it around the trees, around the base of the trees. I'll use it around in the shrubs outside. Um, oh, and if you have a wood deck, a house with a wood deck, rest assured that there's probably a bunch of love wood. wood, wood love wood. Like even so, the boxes I have outside. So what I so what I do in those is that I will get some of that granule and I'll sprinkle it between the two by fours or between the wood deck. And and make sure it's it gets in all those uh, little spaces. If if your patio has the little spaces between it, the little grooves where you can look between it and, and maybe get like a bulb duster and and squeeze it enough bait in there and let it drop in there. Or if you have somewhere there's an opening on the side where you can just throw it in there, and that too will, will help get them. Okay, man, these are great questions, guys. Best lesson was to tuck pants in and socks in before if treating for roaches so that they wouldn't climb on your pants. Ew! Was that it? would freak me out. I couldn't do that. That's from Nadia. But she was working, she worked in pest control for a little while with her um, uncle and aunt. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I had one guy broke his leg. He was in the, he was using the restroom. The roach ran up his leg. While Ew! He was sitting down. I mean, it was a funny story after hearing it, but probably not for him. I can imagine. Broke, he All broke right. his uh, leg. All right. So I think uh, the questions got answered. Like, guys, let me know if there are any other ones there. But I love I love this. Great interaction. Great answers. Thanks. Thanks, bug guy. You know lots of stuff. So I guess I guess you don't just have the title, bug guy, huh? You know lots of stuff. Pretty smart. Poor guy. Yeah, being attacked by all those bugs. I would freak out for real. I could not do that job. That could not be me. It's good. I'm marrying a bug guy. That works out because <laughs> I can't do bugs. If they pay me but enough to do it. Congratulations on your engagement. I heard she's really hot. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, so we're done with the question por- portion. Apartments, tall booths, and schools. Oh, that's what you were working. Okay. We are going to go now to the game portion. Dun, dun, dun. And let's see how we do against the bug guy. As you guys see, one question is already grayed out. We had to get it vetted by the bug guy to see if this was even a worthy game of his uh, of his major skills. Okay, so uh, Natty says a special thank you to you. So we're going to let me say take this off of there. Let me take the comments off so you guys can see it. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the game. You guys feel free to choose a category. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go one against the other. Don't help him out. You guys help me out. I'll be representing you. I'm looking for your answers in the comment section below. So we have. And guys, I have no idea what these questions are. So yeah, no, the only might, one that he knows is the five. I may not even know them, so. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you very much, Lena for commenting and being here but let's go ahead and beat john if at all possible let's whoop his butt let's go up uh let's see who gets to choose the first category do you want to go first or you want the the audience to go first if yeah, audience, I mean, if you guys have a category you want to go for go ahead and put it down below um we've got pest knowledge 
pest treatment, rodents, chemical ants. I I am gonna go ahead and choose the first one because it's me and you guys on the same team. Um, I think I'm gonna try to go for one that I might have half half a chance at. Let's go with ants. Ants for two hundred. Oh, rodents. Okay, I see chemical and rodents. Okay, I'll choose one of those then. I don't know if you guys. If I choose rodents, you guys have to help me out. I don't know much about rodents. Rodents for how much? Or chemical for how much? You guys tell me what category should we go for? I'm going to be counting on the help of the audience. Dun, dun, dun. Rodents, I'm leaning towards 200. What do you guys think? Click on that. All right. Rodents for 200. Uh, it says burrows, blunt nose, small ears, tall, tail shorter than their body. Uh, this is us. Okay, I see 200 and 300. This sounds like um, a blunt nose, small ears, tail shorter than their body. Tail shorter. So it's not a rat. Mouse. Who has a small, who burrows and has a small tail? Male. Oh. Mole. Mole. Okay, I like that. Can I answer it? And the other, no, babe, this is me going against you guys. This is me and the crew going against you. You let us go first, so. Right. Right? Okay. So we got Mole. Does everybody agree with Mole? Any others? Does Mole have a short tail? I'm going to try Mole then, because I'm really not sure. I'll seek a mouse. I don't know. And, and, and I'll leave my answer, too. You're going to leave your answer in the chat box? No, no, that's your answer. I'll choose my answer, too. Oh, I, I okay, say, before I reveal I, it. So yes. you can get the points. Okay. Yeah. I oh, think someone says gopher. Nadia says gopher. Okay. I think, okay, so you guys have chosen your answer. I think. Oh, wait, have... no, we have decided between gopher or mole. Okay. You guys, we need one more vote to break the tie. Is it a mole or gopher? Which one we're going to go with? I think the bug guy thinks it's something different. We don't want him to get, but at least it's only 200 if he does get yeah. it. Any other suggestions down there? I know it's a little delay, but you guys let me know. Any don't, be good, don't, be, don't be Googling it. <laughs> but if you do, we'll never know. Mole. Okay, so we got, oh, man, it's still tied. We got another gopher and another mole. Hi, Donna. Welcome. We got another gopher and another mole. Huh. Someone break the tie, please. Break the tie. I don't see mom down there. I don't know if she got in. Mama, what's, what burrows has a blunt nose, small ears, tail shorter than their body in the rodent family? Thanks for coming, Janelle. I see you too. You say mole too? Okay. So our final answer is mole. I say Norway rat. Oh, goodness. Okay. Let's see how fancy this is. Oh, Bob says go for two. Ay, ay, ay. All right, let's see. Norway rat, I think. I hit the space bar. Here we go. <gasps> you sure you haven't looked at this? No. Who ever heard of a Norway rat? Who is that? All right, so. They're, they're, they're a big deal in New York. Oh, they are. Okay. Wow. Okay, so he's off to a good start. Come on, guys. We got to pull this up. So we're going to escape. Then you get to choose the next category. And um, yeah, for how much? And you guys be thinking about what category for how much? I won't get greedy, so I'll go for rodents for a hundred. Rodents for a hundred. Oh wow! Also called vol, like to burrow. What's this? I've never heard of vol. Does it rhyme with something? Huh? Huh? I'm kind it's of puzzled okay. too. Okay. Anybody? Does I just want to help John out? If you not have feeling. Oh, uh, let's say. Oh, it's my turn. I'm sorry. Let's say uh, Mo. You want to say Mo? Yeah. That'd be so <laughs> funny if that was the answer. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. What oh. is Meadow Mouse? There you down, go. Down, down. Got it wrong. So usually I don't take away points, but I'm tempted. This, what do you guys think? Should we take away points if they miss it? Or that also might bite us in the butt later. 
<laughs> yeah, it will. <laughs> so we know that might bite us in the butt later. Oh, Natty said mole too. Okay, well, it was a meadow mouse. Yeah. I have no idea. I feel like I read a book as a kid about a meadow mouse before. All right, guys. So before we had a suggestions, 300 or 200. Woo. Natty said 500 for either chemical or rodent. Do we want to stay in rodent or go with chemical? Just leave it? Okay. See, the girls are being merciful. They said, Janelle and Nashley Me said, just leave it. So we're not going to take away points from you. But it is back to She's Electric and the YouTube Squad. So that's you guys. I need you. So I'm going to go into chemicals since we already did rodent. For how much? I know nothing about chemicals. So unless you guys do, I say we go with 100. <laughs> that is a boo. Was that for him <laughs> not knowing it? All right. Danger, poison, danger, warning, caution. It's just pesticide or poison, I think. What is the question? <laughs> let's go big. 300, 400. I'll do 300, 400 next time, guys. Sorry. I just saw it. Danger, poison, danger, warning, caution. I guess we're supposed to name the chemical. No. This could be anything. Poison? I have no idea. I'm trying to get understand what the question is. Mind it's, you guys. This I just is what happens when you pick time. a Jeopardy that exactly. somebody created. Exactly. pick a Jeopardy randomly that somebody else made. So it's just like, woo, fun. Let's see what happens. Any suggestions, guys, as to, guys, as to what they want from us? Bleach? Okay. Sure. Oh, oh, maybe that. Maybe. maybe bleach. Yeah. All right. Any other suggestions? I'll give you a couple of minutes. Any other suggestions? Mom, what do you think is danger, poison, danger, warning, caution, and chemicals? She might check down. <laughs> Come on in here, Mama. Oh. Uh. Just, you know, participation is not optional. This is my mama. <laughs> I know. The lovely mother. Okay, mama. You kiss it on the bed. Thank you. All right. So, any other suggestions? Oh, got pesticides, toxic, skull and crossbones. I'm confused. Yeah, I agree. Toxic. Yeah, I am too. I'm, I'm confused. Pesticides, MSDS label. It could be any of those things, guys. I really don't know. I don't think this should, this should count against question? us. It's not really a question. <laughs> Signal words? Uh -oh. oh, signal. That's what they're saying, but they don't, the way it's worded, it oh. just doesn't make sense. Okay, so that doesn't count against anybody. That was ridiculous. I mean, they are signal words, but I mean. <laughs> that was dumb. For 100 especially, but you know, this is what you get for free. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bug guy is back to you. All right. What category and for how much? Let's go for let's do that is uh, the same one you want. <laughs> let's do pest knowledge for a hundred. Pest knowledge for a hundred. Okay. Most abundant social insect. Oh, social insect. I have a guess uh, on this one. There's a couple that I can think of, but it says most abundant social insect. Ants. Ants? Yeah. What is ants? Woo! Oh, goodness. He's beating us already, guys. Come on. It's time for a comeback. All right. So what category do you want to do? Yeah, you got it. Oh, like, Tess got it. Naturally, me said ant. That's totally what it was. Yeah. And all those other guesses were really good, guys. Thank you. Keep the guesses coming. So I heard before that I'm hearing you guys. You want us to go big, 400, 500, so we can go bigger. What category? What category should we go 400 in? I want anything but chemicals because that chemicals was really annoying. Yeah, that was really weird. It was really silly. Like, yeah. Or bees. Oh, well, it's already ants. So let me see. Should we stay in rodents? These are the categories. Yeah. Yeah, this is the pest control Jeopardy. You want to choose one, Mama? Hmm. Pest treatment? Okay. We got pest treatment for 400 from Donna. Do we still want to go with 400 or should we go with less, guys? Let's get a consensus. I'm always a very cautious Jeopardy player. 400. 400? Why not? Okay, we're going for 400. We're going to go with the big stuff. Roots absorb pesticide. Pest treatment? Is this a type of pest treatment? 
that uh, it counts on the roots. It's a, it's a, no, it's a, it's a um, roots observe pesticide. It's a certain pesticide that attaches to the roots. Oh, okay. Well, I have no idea. This is way out of my wheelhouse. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? We'll do the ants next, Nadia. I agree with you. I feel like ants is better for me. We'll do ants for 300 next. I can't think of the, the word, but if I say it, I, I think I'll say it wrong. Roots absorb pesticide. I have no idea. This is a way to treat pests, but I've never treated pests except for spray and raid. 2,4-D? <laughs> is that a type? I mean, whatever they say. And uh, and, and if and if I think I had if my answer is different. I'll I'll give mine so that will be. Okay, you don't have one. Herbicides. Oh, okay. Herbicides, maybe. It's herbicides. Okay. Okay. Maybe it's herbicides. Not... Herbicides. We got two herbicides. Kizzy okay. and Ashley. Me say herbicides. So is that going to be the final go-to or herbicides and two four D are the only two we have? And I'm not sure what two four D is, but. I think if we get either one, since we're not even on the board yet, we should count it. I feel like that's that's fair. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll say some matter. Oh no, it's a matter. You didn't let me get a chance. Oh, you were supposed to. You were supposed to say. No, something. I was waiting for you for for the final answer, and then I was going to get mine. Oh, sorry. You know, I guess I count it. <laughs> You're going to say systemic pesticides, really? Yes. Wah, wah, wah. Sorry. Next okay. time I'll give you more time. It's Forgive okay. me. Yes. You, you come back on show next time, please. All right. Let's, All right. Go, let's go with past knowledge two hundred. Past knowledge two hundred. Okay. This is your turn. Three long tail like terminal appendages. What in the world? Uh, <laughs> three long tails like. Tongue Long tail like appendages. Okay, okay, let's say. Uh, I hope I get it right. Um, mayflies? mayflies? A mayfly? Anybody? Mayflies? Mayflies. That's my answer. Okay, final answer. I have no clue. I cannot help you even if I want to. What is silverfish? silverfish? Ah. Boom. I didn't know silverfish had any appendages. I thought mayflies did too, but eh, there you go. Bam, bam, bam. Man, this is tough. All right. So the next one, we said we we're going to go with, we've, we've already done 200, 100. So we're going to go with ants category. I think so. <laughs> Kizzy, don't feel dumb. <laughs> Jeopardy. It's not just any Jeopardy. This Jeopardy is Very bug hard. Jeopardy. This is hard. So even the bug guy is having a hard time too. So let's go with the ants category 300, I think was what we said. I can't stand silverfish either, too. I totally agree, not either gross. Okay, so this is under ants, yellow to dark brown, monomorphic, burrow into wood to expand the nest. All I know is wood, so carpenter, carpenter ant, that would be my guess because of the wood. That's yellow to dark, what is this? Oh, ants, oh, like the yellow, color they are, yes, under yellow ants to dark. Hundred brown. What do you guys think? I was gonna say carpenter ants. Any other ideas? Wood to expand the nest. Eh, that's, a good, that's a good question, but I don't think it's carpenter ants. <laughs> okay, well, you get a chance. I'll let you do it next time. Bees, bees aren't in the. Or are you saying that's the category we should have chosen? We'll do that next time. Oh wait, wait. So. Man, okay. I don't, and I know my bugs. I don't know. Ants, not bees. Okay. This is ants. Yeah, we're in the ant category. Um, huh. This is a description. Yellow to dark brown, monomorphic. So I guess they don't morph? No, no. So I'll or give you a hint. Monomorphic, monomorphic and polymorphic is two different things. Monomorphic means they're all the same size. Uh, polymorphic means they're, they have, they're different size ants. So there's your hint. Okay. The carpenter ants all look the same to me. Okay, somebody says yellow ants. <laughs> oh, wait, let me see. Kizzy says yellow ants. Um, Nadia says carpenter bees, but I think ants that wouldn't be in the bee category. Um, so we got yellow ants, carpenter ants. Um, any other guys? Any other guesses? I'm still leaning hard towards carpenter, even though. 
the bug guy says is probably wrong. So before we put the final answer, I'll give you guys a few more minutes to put some suggestions out there. And then let me know if you have any other suggestions besides yellow ants, um, carpenter ants. That's all we got. And I'm leading heavy towards carpenter ants. My bad, finally making it home. Okay, <laughs> no worries. Thank you so much for participating so much. All right, so is that the last the last um, guest? Carpenter ants, yellow ants? Because I'm probably gonna go with carpenter ants. And then John, did you have one? No, it's a good guess, but it's just the way it's described. Yellow to dark brown, so I don't know what they mean anymore. So okay. go ahead. <laughs> so you don't have one in particular, go ahead and reveal I it? Have, I don't have a comment. All right, let's see. You may be right. But. Oh, let me go the right place here. What are moisture ants? What? Never heard of that in my life. So there's some. Uh, so on the pest control, so on the pest control side here in Texas, we are in a region. We have certain insects that we always run into. So these might be insects that are further up north, maybe in a different region. They're insects I've not ever dealt with. So, okay. All know. right. That's fair. That's fair. All right, we still have a lot on the board. I don't know if we're going to go through all this because we're going to try to keep it down to like. But the carpenter ant was a good guess. Yeah. So you want to go? So far, we are not even on the board. I want us to get at least one, guys. So let's. If we get at least one, then we can we can stop the game because <laughs> we can't go out like that. We need to get at least one. Let's do. Yeah, we did do rodents. Let me let me let me do um, ants for two hundred. Ants for two hundred. Okay. Most common ants you'll find in a home. What kind of question is that? <laughs> Not a very good one because it depends on where your home is. You might I'm, I'm sorry. It's like what kind of ant? Do you, I mean, I know which ones I find in my home. You know what I mean? All yeah. sorts, all sorts of ants. I'm on the carpet ants the most often, which is kind of disconcerting. Probably keep my house. Most common ant you'll find in a home, but there's so many of them. Yeah. <laughs> Well, just guess what everybody else would probably say. And you guys feel free to guess down below, too, if you want to help them out. Um, wow. So in Texas, rover ants is the number one ant that is found in home and in businesses. Rover so, ants. So, so this Never question they have this, diets too. this question may be something that's related to right. up so north. To probably up north and not here mm -hmm. in the south. So okay. my, my thing is rover ant. That is the... Number one, Morris is yeah. rover, but there like, says sugar ant. black sugar ones. Um, yeah. yeah, Janelle said sugar ants, it totally is regional because he said carpenter ants, and that's the one that's most common I see. Um, so we got carpenter ants, little black ones, sugar ants. Those are the three suggestions if you want to take from the audience. Well, what do you say? What is your final answer, bug guy? Most common ant you'll find yes. in a yes. home, yes. We man. Yes. My heart says rover ants, but I'm thinking it's going to be another one. <laughs> it's it's a uh, rover ants or feral ants. <laughs> Go ahead. So you say what? It's either it's which one you say carbon? Which one? I, I'm going to say rover ants because that is the most common ant that I see here in the south. What are O H A? What is an O H A? <laughs> We're gonna have to Google that. Sorry, guys. This is a I'm free sorry, game. audience. I have no idea what a, what is the OH. 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 It's a bad, it's a bad choice with Jars and Jeopardy. It had a, a really good question. The 500 question was really good. All right, so it's our turn to choose, and we are. Oh, odorous says, house odor. ant is what it meant. Odorous house ant. Odorous house mm -hmm. ant. So oh. that is that is an ant that you find up north. That oh, is not an odorous is not house a, ant. Yeah, oh, look, not, look at that. Okay. So they call them odorous house ants because when you grab them, if you crush one, they release a coconut smell. It's kind of like a little uh, rotten coconut smell. Oh, really? So they, oh, so they call them so they call them odorous house ants. Not not very common here in the south. Oh yeah, fire ants are super common in the south. Man, I got torn up by them as a kid. Yeah. Oh, okay. We got too many. All right, there you go. O H A. There you go. Okay, so let's get on the board, guys. Let's get on the board. Donna says that uh, they're a little in black in Michigan. Okay. The same ones, the OHAs. It could be the odorous them. house ants, but those are so common Odors up house. north. And and they and they are black and small. Okay. So, yeah, that was the one Donna was talking about. Then you should listen to her. We would accept that. All right. So, mom said rodents for 300. All right. 
slightly pointed nose, large ears. The tail is the same length as the body. I think oh. that's a mouse. If it's slightly pointed nose, large ears, what do you guys think? Huh, that is oh, you did say odorous. You did. I'm sorry. But I didn't know what the OHA meant. So we didn't give him any points. No worries. Come on, guys. Let's get on the board. <laughs> let's get on the board just once. Let's do this. So slightly pointed nose is under oh, rodents for 300. Oh, squirrel, maybe. Large ears. The tail is the same length as the body. Is a squirrel? Oh. Yeah, that's a cooking squirrel. Yeah, I guess so. We got field mouse, rat. Huh. Mom says squirrel. What do you guys think? Those are the choices we have so far. Rat, field mouse. So I'm y'all pick your final too. answer and I'll pick mine. Okay. All right. We're waiting for a few more answers, guys. What do you think? Slightly pointed nose. Only slightly pointed. So that's what makes me think the squirrel. Because the rat is a really sharp point, right? Field mouse, I would say that that's more blunt nose. It's like kind of, it's cute. It's like little, I mean, not that mice are cute, but anyway. Um, slightly pointed nose, large ears, and tail is the same length as a body. Mole. You got mole too. What do you think? Mole, squirrel, field mouse. I don't think it's rat, but possibly. Let's see who gets the most votes here. I'm I'm on team squirrel with mom, so we're waiting for our tiebreaker here. That's pretty sad. We got two squirrels, some kind of mouse. Squirrels have small ears. That's true. Squirrel's ears are small. Aha. Uh -huh. they're, they're not big good, ears. Good guess there. So, yeah, that's not true. I guess, but that was good. Daryl says bat. Huh. I think they would have mentioned the wings if it was bat. I've never seen a a, a bat tail longer the same size yeah, as bat's body. Bat's ears are really small. <laughs> yeah, and they've got small, a small tail. I can imagine if the little bat shaking his tail. I think field mouse, the field mice have the biggest ears of all of these choices since it says large ears. I don't know what that looks like. I try to avoid all those things. Yeah, me no, too. No final answer yet? No final answers. We still got the bat, mole, field mouse, rat. I feel like field mouse. I've changed my vote to field mouse. That's a good guess. Awesome list. Yeah. Okay, so the bug guy agrees with it. Maybe that'll get us on the, on the board, guess. guys, and we can finish by an hour. It's a good <laughs> guess. What do you guys think? So final, final one, I think you could say field mouse. And what do you say, the bug guy? Oh, shrew. Oh, that's very specific. Huh. Shrew. Huh. Shrews do have really big ears, don't they? Are they bigger than field mice? No. Now I'm just, oh, goodness. It's going to have me Googling stuff later. Not right now. Two good guesses. So either shrew or field mouse. I'm between those two. All right. So what is your final guess, the bug guy? I'll, I'm almost in the same. You guys go ahead. I don't have a. Okay. So yeah, I think we get the points whether it's shrew or field mouse because mouse. Here we go. What there is house mouse? Woo! We're finally on the board, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yes, naturally me. Oh, and look at that. We tied with the bug. Guy. I'm glad y'all got that. Oh, that's why I didn't say anything because I thought it was a field mouse. Oh, okay. So there you go. I, I didn't want to say field mouse and then it'd be the right answer. I mean, that's. <laughs> I think that's a good place to stop for today. We The whole broadcast, I didn't want it to be over an hour. You guys have been amazing, amazing, amazing. And Bug Guy, you have educated us greatly. I think that this show is going to get some repeat hits, and it's going to help a lot of people with pests in their house. So thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody, for participating. Oh, I just see that Nadia Chinchilla. That's a good one. All right. Thank you so much, everyone that came and supported. And thank you for those who are watching it later. This was successful. Um, if you guys are in the Houston area, look up the bug guy. He has a business he just started. And he knows lots of stuff. You see that. For pest control that is user-friendly, also usually health-inclined, not poisoning yourself, your pets, <laughs> or your family. So um, that's always very good. Thank you for coming, everyone, once again. And we'll see you next time. Get in the broadcast now. Bye. You're All welcome. Right.